trickling in surrounding the death of a 25-year-old who was in seemingly perfect health until Baltimore police chased and, according to his lawyer, tackled him. Suzanne Malveau has the story. Freddie Gray. Look at that leg. That boy leg looks gross. Being detained a week ago by Baltimore police. The question now, how did the 25-year-old go from this to this, lapsing into a coma less than an hour later and dying yesterday? The attorney for Gray's family alleges the police are covering up what really happened. Baltimore police say they spot Gray and begin to approach him at 8.39 in the morning on April 12th for reasons not yet disclosed. They say Gray immediately runs away. Just a minute later, police take Gray into custody. And then 14 minutes later, at 8.54 in the morning, this is the first video we see of the event. Officers load Gray into the police van. Police say video evidence indicates Gray's conscious and speaking at the time. A half hour later, police request paramedics bring Gray to a hospital. This most recent mystery into a deadly police encounter, sparking more outrage. No justice! No peace! In a nation already embroiled in debate over police tactics and use of force. Though in this most recent encounter, Baltimore's mayor promises answers. I want citizens to know exactly how it happened. All right, Joey Jackson, HLN legal analyst, is back with me. Joey, there's two glaring questions here. Why did police pursue Gray to begin with, and what happened to a healthy 25-year-old once he was in their custody that resulted in his death? And, and those are excellent questions, Ali, and those are, are, are answers to those questions are yet to be determined. Because, A, you want to know what criminality, if any, did Gray engage in, and then even if you have an answer to that question as to what criminality it was, what then led to not only him being stopped, but to a vertebrae being severed, to the neck being crushed, and to ultimately him lapsing into a coma and dying. And the circumstances surrounding that will give the community answers, and hopefully the mayor with the investigation that's unflowing will recover and answer questions that relate to what you just asked. Yeah, Joey, I think that nowadays when we're seeing so many of these situations play out and be recorded, that initially there was a sense that this would be what would put a stop to things and clearly that hasn't happened my question for you is whether or not there is a sense of impunity that police officers have real or perceived via the law when they're apprehending suspects in this manner can they be prosecuted can they help be held criminally liable well the answer is absolutely there's really two things here that are at work the first thing of course is that there could be criminal culpability that is based upon an investigation, if there's any crime committed by the police, then they should be held accountable. The second thing, of course, then, is in the event there is a crime, or not even a crime, but gross negligence, the question then shifts to, should there be a civil lawsuit that is the family recovering in monetary damages? Now, to be clear, any family would want their child alive. But the only way for the system to compensate is with money. In terms of impunity, look, I suspect, I hope, and I pray that the police that are out there are exercising that judgment and that discretion in very good ways. They're protecting and serving the community. However, in the event that that doesn't happen in any particular instance, then, of course, answers are demanded, and so is accountability, and then finally, justice. Joey, how much uh, of a part does what they're pursuing the suspect for play a, a role in how much force they're able to use or the means by which they apprehend that suspect, potentially leading to an outcome like this. If it's a misdemeanor, there's a limit. If there's a felony, there's not. I mean, help me get a sense. Well, the simple answer is that force escalates, and that is you use interpersonal communications. You speak to someone. After that, maybe you use pepper spray. After that, you use a taser. After that, maybe a baton. But lethal force has to be the last resort, and there's a use of force continuum, not really relating to the charge that you're chasing them after, but relating to what they're doing to you to justify any threat that you feel and any force you deem necessary to protect yourself and protect the public. Plenty of questions still left to be answered on this one. Joey, thank you.